Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to the DAD North America webinar series. Today we will give you a run through of all available undergraduate as well as graduate scholarships and grants. We are very delighted that you can all join us to hear more about opportunities to fund study and research in Germany. But before we get to our topic, let me introduce to you today's presenters. Um, my name is Hani Geist. I'm the Information Officer in the DAD Information Center in San Francisco. And with us today are John Paul from the DAD Information Center Toronto and Ushi, um, who's a Program Officer in the DAD North America office. So this really is a joint effort of all the DAD North America offices today. Before we start with the webinar, let me get a few questions out of the way. Uh, first of all, yes, I'm actually recording this webinar, so I will upload the webinar on our DAD.org uh, website, and we will also share the slides with you so you don't have to take any notes, and you can review the information later on. And also, you can get the contact information from our slides as well. The attendee list is hidden and because of the large number of participants, we muted the audio. So uh, this should uh, resemble the, um, the view that you have uh, right now on the right side of your screen. Uh, but you can, of course, communicate with us and I uh, encourage you to do so with the question box on the right side. Uh, please send any questions that you have um, as we go along. I will collect them for the Q&A sessions at the very end. Now, what are we going to do today? Today we will give you a brief overview on who DAD is and what we do. And then we get right into studying in Germany and we will answer all the important questions that you may have. And then my colleagues will then talk about available funding on the undergraduate as well as the graduate level. And with that, John Paul will jump right into today's webinar by answering what is DAD and what do we do? Thank you very much, honey, and welcome to all of you. Yes, uh, my pleasure right now will be to um, give you a bit of background on our organization, DAD, who we are, what we do, why we do it. Um, I give you this information not just because it's interesting, but also having a bit of understanding about DAD as an organization, who our funding partners are, etc., should inform the kind of application you give in to us. And I'll touch on some tips for your application towards the end of this webinar, but Right now, let me get into introducing our organization. So DAD is Germany's national agency charged with fostering international academic cooperation and exchange. And we were founded 90 years ago in 1925 as a way of connecting Germany to the world. The history is rather interesting. So 1925, for those of you who are students of history, you will recognize that this is a day shortly after the cessation of hostilities in World War I and Germany found itself very isolated by this catastrophe and was looking for ways to re-engage in a positive way. And one of the ideas that was hit upon was to use the education system, the higher education system, as a bridge to other cultures, other peoples. And so the idea was hit upon to start sending young people and faculty out into the world. And this is something has been doing since, not only sending Germans out into the world, but bringing international scholars to Germany to experience the German university system and academe there. What do we do? Well, first and foremost, we provide scholarships and grants. So in order to get academics to move, DAD has a whole series of funding programs that are open to academics in all disciplines and at all stages of their career. So from bachelor studies all the way up to senior faculty. We would like to partner with leading academics all the way through their career. We also provide information and counseling about study and research opportunities in Germany and we're partners with the German inter universities in their efforts to internationalize themselves and this is something that DAD has been very active in recent years in particular and it's something that I can touch on a little bit later as well. We also have a mandate to support the continued study of German language and culture abroad. So we operate in a number of different areas, but in a nutshell, that is what we do. Moving on to the next point, some facts and figures. How do we do this? 
logistically? Well, DAD has a worldwide network of offices. There are 71 currently all around the globe. Um, at present, uh, we have an information center for Canada here in Toronto, but as Ushi, or, pardon me, as Hani mentioned at the outset, we also have an information center in San Francisco and a regional office in New York. To give you a sense of the, the scope of our activities or the, the resources that we have at our disposal, in 2014, DAD Worldwide had a budget of approximately 440 million euros, um, a significant amount of money. As you can see, and what did we do with that? Well, we moved scholars primarily. So DAD administered programs um, helped move about 120,000 individuals, either from Germany out into the world or from the world into Germany. Um, in 2014, approximately 1,200 of those were related to Canada in some way. We can go on to the next slide, please. To give you a sense of the DAD Worldwide Network, you can see we're virtually in every corner of the globe, and that's one of the nice things about working at DAD is the opportunity to certainly interact with people from all around the world, share a common interest, obviously a common goal. One of the other nice things about DAD is we're often one of the first international organizations into areas emerging from crisis situations, and so you'll see that DAD has an active office in the uh, Turkish Autonomous Region of Iraq, for instance. We're also uh, represented in Pyongyang by a visiting professor. really is a, an effort to connect all academe from all parts of the world to Germany, and that's, uh, in my view, a fairly laudable goal and rather unique. You're all here listening, so I would imagine you can probably answer this question yourself, why Germany? But allow me to take a couple of minutes now to hopefully add to that list of reasons why Germany is attractive to you. As you can imagine, there are a number of motivations for, for heading to Germany. So number one, why Germany? Germany has very high academic standards, so the German university system enjoys a good reputation worldwide. Studies that you do there are generally recognized back here in North America without much difficulty. Certainly degrees acquired in Germany are generally transferable. Also, the, the standard of living that you could expect to enjoy spending time in Germany is, is very high, um, especially as students. Students are um, nicely subsidized in Germany in a variety of ways, and so life as a student there can be quite comfortable at a very reasonable cost. For those of you who are doing work, research in um, settings that require very expensive equipment, you can find that Germany, you will find that Germany offers this equipment um, and it's readily accessible to international scholars as well, typically speaking, so that can be attractive. As I mentioned, um, Germany is also an attractive destination for international students. So this figure here is actually slightly uh, outdated. At present, there are almost 330,000 students in Germany out of a total student body of approximately 3 million people. That's a significant sum. Why is that important? Well, I mention this because if you were to go to Germany, you can rest assured that wherever you go, the university is used to having hosting international students, and they should have a good infrastructure with staff and systems in place to make your transition into your new German environment a smooth one. Probably an important thing to consider as well. Of course, you also want to consider Germany's place in Europe. It's the gold country at the middle of the map here. Obviously centrally located. It's a great base to explore Europe. Um, also, you're going to be in Germany. For those of you who haven't yet had the pleasure of starting to acquire German language skills, you will undoubtedly want to do that once you spend some time in Germany. And you know, this language ability will open so many doors to you, not the least of which to the German-speaking cultural area of Europe. So that extends beyond Germany's borders, obviously. But also one of the things I point out about Germany and it makes it rather attractive is Germany is very much like Canada or the United States a country of regions. There's great difference in terms of the landscapes, the mentalities, the architecture, the culture in different parts of the country, and Germany's relatively compact. These are the sorts of things that you can reasonably expect to experience on you know, a trip over a weekend and that sort of thing. So I would encourage those of you who, who do make it to Germany to take a little time, plan a little time to try to get out and experience some of the different Germanies that the country has to offer.
there are a couple of tools for selecting your destination in Germany. So for those of you, and I think that's probably the majority here today who are currently registered full-time at your institution, I would say your first point of call would be your study abroad office, international office, where you can explore the formal links that exist in your university in Germany, and I'd be very surprised if you've found that there were none. Um, almost every university I've ever worked with has had ample offerings in terms of Germany. If you're looking to do degree studies in Germany, something that I would consider you do is spend a little time on the uh, first website here, study in Germany, so study-in.de. This is a really wonderful resource. Um, it's a portal that includes detailed information on all aspects of degree study in Germany. It's in English, which is also obviously a, a nice touch. The, the centerpiece of that site is very much um, a database, a searchable database that includes entries on every degree program on offer currently at German universities. So you can search that by field of study, keyword, uh, location, language of instruction. So if you don't have university level German, you can see what programs are on offer in English. And it will generate a list of matches and that list is linked directly to the program pages at each specific university. And it's there that you'll find all the detailed information you need about entrance requirements, procedures, anything that you would need to know about how to apply and how to get in is all found there. So study in Germany, a great place to start. Another really useful resource is the Higher Education Compass. Um, that is more of a resource that shows existing links between North American universities and German universities. So if that's something you're looking to identify, where where is your home institution linked to, that's a tool that you can use for that. At this point, I think I'm going to hand over to my colleague Ushi, who's going to give you detailed information on DAD and its support programs. Ushi? Mm -hmm. Hello from New York. Um, welcome to this webinar. So as John Paul just mentioned, I'm uh, going to talk about individual programs now that DAD offers for undergraduate and graduate students, um, not only to study abroad um, in Germany, but as you can see on this slide, um, we also um, support students who want to do an internship in Germany, senior thesis research, or um, language courses. Um, we have programs for students in all fields. Most of our programs are actually open for students in all fields. Um, and I'm also going to introduce a few programs that are specifically targeted towards specific fields. Um, previous knowledge of German is not necessarily required to receive DAD funding. Um, a lot of programs in Germany are offered in English. Um, but of course, it's still um, a great advantage if you speak the, the, the language. So you can also interact outside the classroom um, or workspace. Um, the longer um, scholarships are normally paid out as a monthly stipend. If you go for a shorter program to Germany, you, would, um, you often receive a lump sum payment to cover your costs. All our scholarships um, include health insurance. That's also mandatory to have in Germany. Some travel reimbursement is always included. And then for most programs, we also have a so-called all team meeting, where all um, different students who are on a DAD scholarship um, get together and meet um, in a German city. Um, this can be either pro students in the same program on the same scholarship are really students from all over the world. And you might remember that map that John Paul showed you earlier. So it's really um, a fantastic opportunity to get to know international students in Germany. Um, so as for the opportunities to study in Germany, I'd like to start with the undergraduate scholarship. This scholarship can be used to fund study abroad in Germany, but also thesis research and internships. Um, at the time of application, you should be in your second or third year at a North American university or college. So that means by the time you go to Germany, um, you're in your third or fourth year. So you're a junior or senior. 
Um, you can either go with an organized program, a program organized through your university or a third-party provider. However, you can also independently design your own stay in Germany and apply for DAD funding. This is one of the programs that's all open for all students in all academic fields. Um, the minimum stay in Germany is t four months, but you can apply for funding up to a full year. Um, however, this time has to be during the German academic year that normally starts um, on October 15th and then runs all the way to um, mid-July. Um, the monthly stipend for this um, scholarship is 650 euro per month. And in most German cities, um, this is enough really to cover your living expenses. There are a few cities that are much more expensive, especially when it comes to accommodation. Um, and for these cities, um, it's possible for our scholarship holders to apply for a rent subsidy. Um, as I mentioned before, insurance is included and um, also a travel stipend to cover the cost for, of a flight from the US or Canada to Germany and back home. The deadline for this program is January 31st. Um, and this is for the coming academic year, so for 2016-17. So even if you want to go to Germany only in the spring of 2017, you already have to apply by January 31st, um, 2016. Most of you won't have acceptance into a study abroad program at that point. If you don't, um, we recommend that you include a letter of intention that is also signed by your academic or study abroad advisor. Um, and then for those who um, are awarded the scholarship in the end, they can hand in their acceptance at a later point. We have a similar program on the graduate level. Um, the earliest time of application is during your last year at university or college, just before you graduate. Um, and this program offers support um, for one year, but also it can be extended for up to two years of study in Germany so that you can actually complete a full master's degree program at a German university. Um, you can also study at a, as a German university as part of a postgraduate or master's degree completed in your home country and receive this um, support. Here you can see again, um, German language skills are not necessarily required. That really depends on the program you're applying for. But as I mentioned before, it's definitely um, a great um, chance if you live in the country that you also learn the language at least at a um, up to an um, at a beginners or intermediate level. So you can at least interact a little bit also outside the classroom. Um, graduate students receive um, 100 euros more per month and again insurance and, tra and travel allowance is included in this um, scholarship and as you can see um, the deadline is coming up very soon on November 4th already. Um, I'm now going to introduce some funding programs um, that support research and internships in Germany. I'd like to start with the research grant. This is also a possibility um, to go to Germany for um, one month up to a full academic year with the possibility of an extension. Um, again, the earliest time to apply for this program is just shortly before you graduate from university. Um, so this program is, is basically meant for grad students and um, also for postdocs. Um, of course, you need a very, very well-defined research project um, to um, apply to this program and um, this um, grant can actually also be used to complete a, a, a PhD program in Germany. We have a um, the short-term program um, and a long-term program. You can see the deadlines for both programs is also November 4th and then we have a second deadline on May 15th for the short-term grant only. And um, the monthly support that depends on your academic level is up to um, 1,000 euros a month. Um, and again, travel um, allowance and insurance is also included in this grant. Um, 
And now I move on to one of our grants that is um, targeted um, towards a specific field to, um, German, to foster German studies. Um, you can already apply as a junior to this program, um, but also it's also open for grad students um, who work on a German studies project. Um, this is short-term research, so only funding for about one to two months in Germany. You need to be nominated by your department chair, and you can see you already need a minimum um, language level to be eligible to apply for this grant. So two years of university level equivalent are expected, and you must have taken a minimum of three courses in German studies um, in order to be eligible for this grant. This grant is paid out as a lump sum, so normally it's between $2,000 and $3,000, and these are really meant to offset your living expenses in Germany and to cover your travel costs to Germany. There are two deadlines every year. One is coming up soon, um, November 1st, and then we have a second um, deadline um, in the spring next year. Um, this is an internship opportunity also targeted towards specific fields, mainly political science, international relations, law, history, economics, or German students. Um, Advanced undergraduate students are eligible to apply, as well as graduate students. And this is a fantastic opportunity um, for an internship um, at the German parliament for two months. Um, of course, a very high level of German is required for this program because the working language at the parliament is German. Um, and as you can see also on this slide, this is actually a very well-paid internship. You will receive a monthly salary of 1,800 euros per month from the German Bundestag. Um, that's enough to cover living expenses in Berlin. There's no travel allowance included in this program, but I think the month monthly salary is also enough to also cover your travel expenses to get to Germany and back home. Um, a very popular program is um, our RISE program, Research Internships in Science and Engineering. Again, this program is, as it says, not open um, to students in all different fields, but it's really mainly targeted towards um, the STEM students. Um, as for the undergraduate scholarship, you can apply um, in your second or third year at university or college. Um, and this is a summer internship opportunity from 8 to 12 weeks during the summer. Um, undergraduate students from North America work directly with a German PhD student um, in a lab at a German university at a very specific project. Um, for this opportunity, no German is required because the working language in the lab is English. Um, however, part of the grant is that you have the opportunity to take a two-week intensive language course before you start your internship. This is not mandatory, but a great opportunity to also um, learn the language at the same time. Um, so there are also scholarships for the students to cover the living expenses in Germany, and housing assistant is normal, assistance is normally provided by the universities, by the host universities. Um, and you can see we really receive quite a lot of applications for these programs. We've been able to place 300 interns this summer, um, but compared to the number of applications, you can see it's a quite competitive program. The deadline for the summer of 2016 is coming up in January, on January 15th. Um, and the database with all the different internship descriptions will open sometime in the fall. Um, we have um, another RISE program that we call the RISE Professional Program, also targeted towards um, STEM students. Um, and this program is for students who are enrolled in a master's or PhD program here in the US or Canada. Um, the workplace of the, for these internships um, are not laboratories at German universities, but um, at leading German companies. Um, and here, the, the language requirements really basically depend 
um, under specific job descriptions. So there are internships where no German is required, but of course there are also um, depending on the specific tasks, um, internships where you need to be able to speak German. Um, again, also for this program, we offer the opportunity to participate in a two-week intensive language course grant before starting the internship. Um, and then um, the monthly stipend for this program is um, 752,000 euros monthly. Um, the length of the scholarship is limited to three months though. And you can see the deadline is also here in January, end of January, so on the 31st. Um, as I mentioned before, um, DAD also supports language learning in Germany. We have two language course grants for um, undergraduate and graduate students. So the university summer course grant um, is um, a three to four week opportunity during the summer. Um, this is not meant for um, beginning learners of German, but you need to have um, two years of um, college or university German um, to be able to follow those courses. So basically you need to be on an intermediate level already before you start this course because these courses focus on literary, cultural, political and economic aspects. Um, so these are not meant for beginners. There are hundreds of courses to, to choose from. Um, this online database where you can filter by location, by focus of the course, and so on. And then the scholarship basically covers tuition, room and board, and again, health insurance and travel reimbursement is included. The um, deadline is coming up on December 1st. Another language course um, grant that we offer is the um, intensive language course grant. This is um, open for to undergraduate, graduate and PhD students. Um, you can learn German for eight weeks in Germany. Um, but here we have a restriction. This grant is actually open for all students except those who study in the field of German studies, German language and literature or translation. Um, for undergraduate students, if you do a German minor, it's okay to apply. Um, German majors, unfortunately, cannot apply for this program. But then at the same time, um, these are also not courses meant for beginners. You must have at least three semesters of college German to, um, to qualify for this grant. Again, the scholarship covers tuition, accommodation. Um, it also includes cash allowance as well as health insurance and a uh, subsidy towards travel from your home country to Germany. Um, and the deadline is the same. It's also um, on December 1st. So these are all the programs um, DAD offers for undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to my colleague John Paul in Toronto, um, and he has some tips for success for you. Thank you, Ushi. Yes, um, DAD application processes um, can be a little daunting, especially for people who are doing this for the first time. So um, but there are things that you can do to improve your chances for success, and I'm going to spend a few minutes touching on these now. So the key piece to many of our applications is a statement of motivation, expressing why it is you want to do the activity you're asking us to support. And it's important for us here to understand your motivation clearly, and to see how this fits into either your academic goals, your academic career path, or indeed your career path outside of the university, what it is you plan to do with your life. Why is it that this course of study, this location, this professor, this program is central to that endeavor? So if you can make a compelling case, that's great. If you can also show some linkages to what it is you're doing now, to things that you've done before. So if you had the opportunity to be in Germany before, if you've had an interest in German culture, politics, whatever, make sure you, you tell that. And then try to demonstrate how this will, this experience will play into your future plans. So we're interested in seeing an arc 
um, if you can tell us a story, that is great, um, and it is very compelling. So that would be the number one thing. Um, obviously, show your passion. So you know you want to do this, communicate to us why you want to do it and why it's so important to you. Obviously, many of the applications also require, especially true for research stays, um, some evidence of contact with a German university, an institution, or specific professor. Now, DAD is a well-known institution inside Germany, and so professors there are used to supplying these letters of support. So that's the first thing that I would underline. Um, it's not coming out of the blue. How do you get those letters of invitation? Well, for those of you who are um, I would suggest your first uh, course of action should be to speak with your professors. Find out who they have as contacts in Germany and whether they would be willing or able to supply you with such a letter. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a DAD scholarship during my master's studies and that's exactly how it worked for me. In the event that you don't have those contacts through your profs, um, you shouldn't be discouraged. Uh, I can tell you that having spoken to people who adjudicate, who um, evaluate our applications, they're always interested to see when students take the initiative. So if you have identified a university of particular interest, a scholar of particular interest, I would strongly encourage you to take the initiative, write to them directly, and ask, introduce yourself, and ask whether they would be willing to provide you with such a letter. Um, obviously, in introducing yourself that way, you'll want to explain your interest, demonstrate your knowledge of what it is that's going on at that specific setting, and why it's important to you. Also underline what it is you're, you have to offer them, um, because you do have things to offer them. Um, so indicate, you know, that what you're willing to do, what you're able to do with them, for them, um, and that will pique their interest. Those, those uh, instances where students take that initiative are very compelling for adjudication committees. So if that's your situation, you should be encouraged to do that. DAD scholarships and grants are competitive and merit-based, which basically means we like to support the best of the best students. Now, we receive a lot of applications from highly qualified individuals, and frequently our committees find themselves in a situation where things are equal and we have more candidates than we have scholarships. And how do they break those ties? I can tell you that the motivational statement is very important, but the letters of recommendation often are decisive. Um, some tips on the letters of recommendation. So you should get a letter from a professor who teaches in your major field of study. Letters from professors teaching in your elective courses are less convincing. So that would be number one. Number two, these letters obviously have to be very strong. We certainly recognize that uh, it's a challenge um, getting good letters of recommendation in some cases, um, that it can be awkward. One tip that we received from a professor when we were out doing one of these sessions uh, that I like to pass on is the following. If you approach a professor for a letter of recommendation, ask if the professor is able to provide you with a strong letter of recommendation. Not just a letter of recommendation, but a strong letter of recommendation. This will give the, if the professor doesn't feel they know you well enough or they don't feel they're um, willing to provide that strong letter, it gives them an out. It also makes very clear something that is um, compelling and will support your case. and also give you certainty that if the professor says yes, you can reasonably expect that they will provide a letter that will help your case and not be uh, neutral or in fact even hurt it in some cases. So that, that's an important thing to note. Also, as I mentioned, we receive many applications. Um, make sure that your application is on time and complete. So our applications are adjudicated by volunteers, German professors and professors from North American universities. They do this on their free time, and so we are interested in doing whatever we can to lessen the workload for them, and one of the ways we can do that is by eliminating applications that don't meet all the criteria. This sounds harsh, but I will say on the other side, if you go to the DAD North America webpage, dad.org, and look under the scholarship section, on each of those pages, 
you will find an email address of a program officer. And those are the individuals who oversee these, these specific programs. And frequently these people have been doing that work for many years. Um, and they are in a position to give you very clear advice about um, what you need to do to make sure your application is complete. All I would say is try to do any communications with those people more than two weeks before the deadline. Anything after that and it becomes very harried in the office and you know it's hard for us to communicate in a timely fashion. So that would be advice. As I mentioned, we have a DAD North America website. Uh, for Canada, the page is nested dad.org forward slash Canada. For all of North America, dad.org. General information about study and research in Canada. We touched on it earlier. Studyingermany.de is a very useful site. The other one that I would uh, highly recommend to you for those of you at more advanced stages of study, that is doctoral, postdoc studies, research in Germany. Um, this URL uh, should be updated. It's research-in-germany.org. So we'll correct that before we circulate this to you all. The other resource that I would refer you to, um, if you're looking for sources of funding beyond DAD, um, this is particularly true for, again, doctoral studies and above, but there are some opportunities for uh, master students as well. The Funding Guide website, funding-guide.de. And finally, um, I'm going to assume that a number of you are undergraduate students who will be heading off to Germany and that you're going to have a great time and a really positive experience and want to share that when you come back. If that's the case for you, we have a program that uh, might be of interest. It's our Young Ambassadors program and essentially what this does is we identify and train a number of undergraduate students who've had Germany experience, not necessarily DAD experience, but a time in Germany that I believe over two months. Um, and these are students who are enthusiastic about what they've experienced and want to come back and share that. So if this is something of interest to you, I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with the program at the uh, web address above, dad.org forward slash ambassadors. Um, essentially what this would involve is you getting in touch with your international office at your home university, letting them know you're interested and asking whether they'd be willing to nominate you for this position. We consider those nominations. We pick a number every year, about 30, fly them to New York for a couple of days in August for some training, chance to meet each other, get some ideas about the work that they would do in the coming year, and uh, generally prepare them for being our ambassadors on their campus. It's a great program, and if you're interested in uh, doing that, we'd really love to have your application. So that's something to consider as well. Finally, another opportunity uh, for those of you who've had your appetites whetted for study in Germany, we have the second German higher education virtual fair taking place this Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And basically what this is, is a virtual study abroad fair or study student fair, which will introduce you to a number of German universities. I believe at present there are over 15 German universities that have registered to be on hand and you'll have the chance to go online and interact with the individuals representing those schools and ask them any questions about specific courses of study there, what opportunities exist. Great, great opportunity. You can register for that online now at www.germanhighereducationfair.de. And I believe the question mark means it's now time for your questions. Exactly. Thank you, John Paul, and thank you, Ushi, for your presentation. Uh, we do, in fact, have a few questions already, but I would like to encourage uh, the attendees to um, ask more questions. Uh, we're here for you right now, so feel free to add more questions to the list. But the very first question um, is from Cindy, and she asks if there is no financial aid offered for students who want want to start their university studies from the beginning, so meaning is there no um, funding available for students who would like to get their bachelor's in Germany? Ushi, do you want to take it or should I? Um, I, I can take it, yeah. So um, 
for this, um, the DAD North America only provides funding for study abroad in Germany. We don't offer um, scholarships um, to cover a complete bachelor's degree program in Germany. That's that's not um, available. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add something, John Paul? Are they? Um, no, I mean, it, right. In terms of the funding, that is absolutely the case. I would say if bachelor level studies are of interest to you and this is something that we're getting more inquiries about certainly at our office here um, I would encourage you to spend some time on that study in Germany website so study hyphen in dot de um, it is certainly possible for North American high school graduates to pursue bachelor level studies in Germany but there are some hurdles to that um, first and foremost being the language of instruction at the undergraduate level in Germany remains overwhelmingly German. So unless you have university level German, you will find that the number of offerings um, in your area field of interest will likely be rather limited. So that would be number one. Number two, standard high school diplomas, and this varies considerably, but I can say generally certainly in the Canadian case, and I don't know what it's like in the States, but a, a standard high school diploma, Canadian high school diploma, uh, is typically not sufficient to gain direct access to German bachelor studies. So some sort of program, qualifying year program or qualifying program will need to be completed. So those are the two main hurdles that exist at the bachelor level. Um, I will say that access to the German university system for degree studies opens up quite dramatically from the master's level on. Um, at the master's level there are over 1,300 English language degree programs, uh, virtually every field uh, is covered there. Um, so this is something that becomes uh, very attractive. This is not to discourage you from pursuing bachelor studies in Germany, just to make you aware of what the major hurdles are. I don't know, Ushi, do you want to speak to the issues yeah, around I high just, school? Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing on a more positive note, um, that um, bachelor to get a bachelor's degree at a um, German public university. All these universities um, don't um, charge any tuition fees. Um, so you basically, even if there are no DAD scholarships um, for you to complete a full degree program in Germany, um, the living expenses, as I mentioned before, are between 600 and 700 euros. There might be a semester fee normally between 100 and 200 euros. Um, but that also includes often a ticket for public transportation for the entire um, semester. So you can see compared to North American institution, both in the US and Canada, it's quite affordable um, to study in Germany. So if you overcome those hurdles, um, John Paul just mentioned, um, I think it's definitely a great destination to also complete a, a full master's degree, uh, bachelor's degree program. Absolutely. Great, thank you. I have a few questions that I'm going to combine um, related to the research grant. The first um, part of that is there have been some changes. So there is someone who asked um, about the research grant due November 4th that um, last year it was two recommendation letters and now it's only one and the person is a little bit confused and just wants to um, have confirmation and, and more detail on um, if, if there were any changes, what the kind of changes are for the research grant, if you could summarize them, the two, the two main ones. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, uh, it, it's, it's um, basically, I can just answer that question with yes, it's only one recommendation letter that is needed. Um, and then the major changes is that this program is now also open for master students. Um, and PhD students, PhD students before um, they reach ABD status. These are basically the major changes compared to last year. And when you say master's students, that includes students who just received a bachelor's degree. So can they also um, already apply when they're um, mm -hmm. senior students? Or does that mean that they have to be master's students already enrolled? Um, no, as I mentioned before, so um, graduating seniors can also apply for this program. Okay, perfect. Thank you. But then, of course, the um, study in Germany is you can either, yeah, no, I, th I think that's all <laughs> to okay. answer that question. I don't want to go too much into detail here. 
Okay, and then um, so uh, a question that I also get when I'm on the road, um, can you apply for more than just one grant? So basically if you if you apply to one DAD grant, uh, does that mean that you can apply for, for other grants or, or how does this work with, with the DAD? John Paul, would you um, like to take that question? Sure, um, you can apply for more than one grant at once, you can only receive one grant at a time. So you would have to choose if you were fortunate enough to get an offer in both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if it's possible to accept one grant after the other, so for example, say you have a um, language course grant for the summer and then you start um, the undergraduate scholarship um, in the fall, that's certainly possible, just not at the same, you cannot hold two um, grants or scholarships at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then we have someone who is uh, going to apply for a master's program. Uh, she says she studied abroad last year in Germany and she wants to ask the German professors for a letter of recommendation. Um, she asks us if this is a good idea and if so, how um, does she get the letter from him and send them in? Well, well, the... the um professors have to send um, the recommendation letter t directly to us. Um, we also accept um, PDF files, so um, the professor could also email it um, to our New York office or the, the responsible person for that program. You will find the contact information on the respective website. Mm -hmm. And now I'm um, regarding the language courses. You said that um, it's um, either um, college level courses or other experience. So uh, if someone, for example, um, learned German at a good institute, um, that is also acceptable. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, so uh, the application will typically uh, include a language evaluation form, a language assessment form. So you'll need to have that uh, completed by Generally speaking, it's someone in teaching German at a, at a university, but a good institute uh, teacher there can also complete this form, and that basically um, confirms for us that you've reached the appropriate level for this program. So, mm -hmm. yes, um, yeah, having learned, you can you can have acquired your German in any number of ways, but you will need to have that assessment form completed. So that's sort of our guarantee that you have been uh, looked at by a qualified individual. Mm -hmm. And then um, most of the DAD scholarships and grants have a pretty early deadline. Um, do um, applicants already have to be enrolled in a program or accepted into a program? Or um, how, how would that work if, if the application deadline is sometimes uh, several months uh, prior to the actual application deadline? I'm happy to take this one, Ushi, yeah. if you want. Um, yes, so we, yes, our deadlines are rather early. Um, as a result, we are aware of the situation that students typically do not have a letter of acceptance, uh, formal enrollment uh, at the program of choice. Uh, so the way it works is you need to indicate in your applications what your planned course of study is, um, and then basically it, you would get the scholarship conditionally. So that is, if you were, say, applying for one of the study scholarships to pursue a master's degree in Germany, you can indicate up to three um, degree programs that you would like to pursue. If you get the scholarship, it is conditional on you receiving a letter of acceptance from one of those three. In the unlikely event that you would not be accepted to any of those, we are generally flexible. If you have a letter of acceptance from an equivalent program at an accredited German university, we are usually willing to transfer the scholarship to fund that activity as well. So that holds across the board. Um, we try to be flexible and understand that you won't have the formal acceptance uh, for the exchange or whatever it is. Um, we just need to see what your plan is and then some assurance later on that you have indeed been accepted to proceed with that plan. Mm -hmm. um, can you say something about the general GPA requirements for the programs? Is there a minimum GPA that is required for the, the scholarships and grants? Is it a little flexible? Is it, can you say something about um, those requirements, if they exist? Um, we don't have a we don't have a minimum GPA requirement, but as um, John Paul mentioned before, all our scholarships are merit based, um, and from our experience, it's good to have a GPA above 
3, 3.34 at least. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I mean, you, you don't, it's not that you're disqualified if your GPA is lower. Um, there are multiple um, application documents that you have to submit and if you can really make your case, if you send us a an outstanding um, letter of motivation and you receive great recommendation letters, um, the GPA is not everything that counts. Mm -hmm. And so then, Paul, you wanted to add oh, something? No, I thought that, thought that was the point that I wanted to make. I also wanted to um, maybe just spend a second talking about the RISE program. That is probably the most popular program uh, certainly here in Canada in terms of numbers of applicants it generates and the ratio there is getting more difficult every year and we frequently hear from students um, who say oh well I'm not in the top five percentile of my class what's the point point?" and in RISE in particular because there's this very specific research focus um, if you have experience or interest in um, areas that overlap very nicely with the research projects that are on offer you should definitely take a shot and apply for RISE even if your grades are not at the absolute top level because frequently the host researcher, the doctoral student has great input on the, on the decision as to who gets the scholarship and they're interested more in the match on the thematic or the specific research topic level as opposed to the GPA. So that would just be my point there, uh, encourage mm -hmm. people to apply to RISE even if you're not at the absolute top of your class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. Um, speaking again about the um, recommendation letters, so um, someone asks if the letters have to come from professor or, for example, also from an employer. Um, what what is preferred here um, for the applications? Is there a general rule? Um, yes, so certainly we only want um, recommendation letters from professors. Um, we want recommendation letters um, referring to an academic setting and not um, from employers. Mm -hmm. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. And then, um, so uh, for uh, the study scholarship or for the undergraduate scholarship, um, um, if you um, apply and you write a study proposal and potentially you have a multiple um, schools in mind that you would like to attend and since you don't know which one you will actually get into are you going to write several letters of motivation several study proposals or will you only write one um, you will only write one um, but discuss these different choices and your preferences and give reasons for that so I wouldn't um, give more than three different choices um, but um, up to three I think is totally fine and um, you would then just discuss the different reasons um, in your motivation letter but you would write just one one um, proposal one text mm -hmm. Um, so I have a question about the language uh, scholarship. Someone says that he's interested in intensive language learning funding, um, but he's only be, uh, able to complete two semesters of German um, since he's a senior, but he's also going to learn German during the winter break, which is a three-week intensive language course. Does that make him eligible for the funding um, to, to apply for the intensive language courses, or will he be disqualified? Maybe John Paul. Well, I mean, it's difficult to say. So, I mean, the the they they outline a minimum level of language ability. Um, so it's basically three semesters or the equivalent. And so you would still have to have the language assessment form done. And if the assessor determines that cumulatively you will have reached that level, then that would be fine. I think the challenge that you're going to face is that assessment will need to be done. Um, if you're applying this this year, um, well before you will have done those studies and at the time of doing the assessment in say December, November, you probably will not be near the required level. So I think in, in this specific case it will be very difficult to demonstrate the minimum language ability at the time of application. That's, that's going to be the challenge here. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if the individual in question is planning to continue their studies, um, which it sounds like that's the plan, then there's no reason they couldn't apply, say, next year mm -hmm. for that same 
thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question regarding the um, language um, requirements actually at German universities and I assume that question comes from um, someone in Canada based on the name. So do Canadians need to prove um, English proficiency in their application if they're interested in an international degree program? And if they do need that, what kind of English proficiency tests do they need to take? Uh, well, that will vary from institution to institution. Mm -hmm. I have not encountered people or students from English-speaking Canada, um, from an English-speaking educational setting, requiring anything formal uh, in that nature. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a student from, say, Quebec, graduating from a French environment, um, then it is entirely possible, but exactly which language test they would require of you is something that the institutions can communicate to you. Um, it will vary, and so I can't generalize mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I have someone who's actually interested in visual arts and was wondering if there are any scholarships that are offered particularly for students in, 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 in that field of, of, of study. Um, well, our undergraduate scholarship is open for students in the visual arts, as is the study scholarship. Um, the application um, goes through a separate website for um, um, visual and performing artists, but this program is also open to, um, for those students. Mm -hmm. And then that's a very broad question, um, and maybe you can um, answer that in detail here, but someone is curious about um, graduate students in their final year and postgraduates, and um, if there are any opportunities for those students, since um, in this particular uh, webinar we uh, mainly focused on undergraduate and graduate students. Um, John Paul, would you like to take that question? Sure, so the research grant program is open to recent postdocs. Um, absolutely, so you can familiarize yourself there. Visiting the DAD.org website under PhD and postdoc opportunities, you'll see a list in there of all of our uh, relevant programs. I would also refer um, people interested in postdoc funding to the Research in Germany website, so research-in-germany.org, um, or also to the, the funding guide, funding-guide.de. There you will find uh, information not only on uh, funding opportunities through DAD, but all of the other major players in the German research landscape. And as I alluded to earlier, from the doctoral level on in particular, um, there are numerous funding opportunities in Germany for both short-term stays, longer-term uh, research stays, fellowships, and the like. Um, you'll find all sorts, all that information at the Research in Germany website or at the fun, in the funding guide. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, looking at my watch here, I think we're now um, very close to the one hour of our webinar. Um, we uh, don't have any more questions at this point as far as I can tell, but if um, you still have questions or if you feel your question um, wasn't answered um, sufficiently, I encourage you to get in touch with us. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, but I will also upload the webinar on the website as I mentioned before and you can of course always get in touch with us but all the information about the scholarships and grants you can find on our website dad.org and also um, as uh, John Paul just mentioned on the funding minus guide.de. So with that I would like to thank you all for joining us today and um, I would also like to um, thank Ushi and John Paul for presenting all the scholarships and grants uh, today and uh, again if you have any questions um, do feel free to get in touch and, and ask us uh, anything you would like to add Ushi or John Paul as a closing remark anything you forgot to mention anything you would like to say um, I guess I would uh, add our email address so here in Canada if you're Canadian based students or faculty please write us at daadca at dad.org be happy to answer any additional questions you might have yeah
And we do have that contact information at the very beginning of our slides. So if you um, didn't just catch that right now, it will be in the presentation and you can look it up later um, and also on our DAD.org website. Um, anything um, on your end, Ushi, that you would like to add? No, um, that's actually all. Thank you very much for joining us today. And yes, as Sunny said, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. If there are any other um, webinars in the future, of course, we, uh, we will um, advertise that in our newsletter, but also on our Twitter account and our Facebook account. So please stay tuned for any um, other webinars in the future. And with that, I would like to thank you. I wish you a wonderful week and um, have a good day. Bye.